Hey y'all, it's Charlotte from the Hartsville Homestead, back here with you on the Creative Retreat Kids YouTube channel with uh, the March release, Rock of Ages. The devotion was written by Erin Davis and we have had the most beautiful kit to work through. I did show a little bit in my last video before I started breaking it apart and using it up. I have completed um, an entry in my Bible and then I also did my weekly um, scripture writing practice that I do. I didn't show this in my first video prepping because I was kind of in the midweek of one before, so I wanted to bring it back and show you how I use those stickers that I had printed out, and then I have completed my word study card. So now it's time for me to go in and work a little bit in my Creative Reflections um, journal. Now, I wanted to show you and talk a little bit before we get started. I have pulled some of the um, Faithful Digitals again, and I wanted to show you that I did this in the digitals and printed it, but there are a number of ways that you could get to this. I wanted to create these big rocks on my page and do some paper piecing and layering and uh, just have a good time of, of working with the different elements. But I did this in the digitals. I, I took the little title, expanded the rock from the digitals, and then did a little bit of selecting and replacing in that piece with some different uh, paper swatch pieces. Now, you could use the um, cut front of your devotional card. You could use this as a little template. You could use the stamp uh, rock as a little template and take that and enlarge it even on a copier to create you some um, templates for these little broken pieces to build that rock look. I'm gonna be cutting these down and enlarge them a little bit bigger than I had anticipated. Um, and so I'm gonna cut them down and reduce some of this white space in between. Uh, but I just, I have this, idea in mind to just play with these paper pieces and build um, as I uh, reflect and journal. And I'm just going to make a little creative spot for me to record some takeaways. I have already done some of the questions and um, some of the lessons uh, that I've recorded in my scripture writing and note taking. And so I just want to make a place where I can finish out uh, putting, recording some of those thoughts and putting some notes down uh, before I move on into next month's uh, kit. So let's get started. Okay, now while we go into fast forward mode here and I fiddle with all of these pieces <laughs> for my pages, I want to share with you some things I found when doing some research and reading um, on the Rock of Ages hymn. It was written by Augustus Toplady. It is recorded that when Toplady first published the stanza of the original poem, which would be the first verse of our hymn, uh, it was published in an article and the paragraph that preceded the first stanza of the hymn read... If you fall, be humbled, but do not despair. Pray afresh to God, who is able to raise you up and set you on your feet again. Look to the blood of the covenant and say to the Lord from the depths of your heart, Rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flowed be of sin the double cure. Save from wrath and make me pure. In this poem or prayer, Top Lady uses Rock of Ages as an endearing term for God. So when looking at the hymn, Christ's blood from his death as the forgiveness of our sin is the theme in verse 1. And then it goes on to say verse 2 focuses on the idea that we can never repay him for that sacrifice. And then baptism is the theme of 3. And then 4 with the focus of... Um, Asking for mercy as we face death. I thought how interesting um, all of these thoughts and reflections are on this hymn. Scriptural references um, cited were Exodus thirty three twenty two, For instance, when my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. And then in Psalm 18, 2, it is noted in one of these articles um, that this is a verse that connects to this hymn, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation and my stronghold. Then also a British hymnologist, that's a pretty cool title, isn't it? Suggested that perhaps the hymn refers most to 1 Corinthians 10, 4. For they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. 
Now, while there are many other notes recorded about the history of this hymn, one that I found in a different article um, than I was just reading from stood out to me. It observes something deeper, saying, This is a very personal hymn, and it uses pronouns such as I and me rather than we and our, which focuses on individual salvation. I like that connection. Uh, So while I think it's important that we love and enjoy our hymns and worship music, y'all know I love connecting even all these devotionals back to a song so that we can carry that song with us in our heart even after we finish studying. But I believe connecting these songs and lyrics directly to scripture, like these notes have done, and to the stories from the authors and the poets, because many times these songs came straight from their testimonies. So they were sharing from their heart and from their experiences what God had done in their lives. And they help us remember God's word even more. I'll note the two links um, of the articles that I had done some reading through now, but a good search uh, will also give you um, a lot of further reading on the hymns. I like looking at the history of different hymns. I think they're very interesting and so historical because some of them were written so, so many years ago. And I think that's that's really fascinating. Um, now, back to these pages. <laughs> you know, when I sat down to create these pages, I had other ideas in mind. Do y'all ever do that? You think, oh, this is what I'm going to do. But then as I work and I think about the questions or devotional and my mind just kind of starts getting relaxed and not really focused on a particular outcome, just let things come together. It really evolved into something else. And I really like how it turned out. Um, Part of the modification was due to the fact that the rocks were just a little big for my pages. So where I thought I was going to use two, I ended up just using maybe one and a half. And that's okay. Um, It's more creative worship. It's more about that than perfectly planned pages. The techniques here weren't really involved or challenging. Just cutting and placing pieces. I had to chuckle. I was reflecting on the process as I had gone back and looked at the video. I was like, I could could name this page Rock, Paper, Scissors because I used it so much. It's made of paper. It's of a rock. And I cut so many little pieces out. I just had to laugh. But um, as they were coming together, I did have a lot of what I felt like, uh, like the title was on a white paper. And then I had this little um, journaling card that I wanted to take the, the scripture from and put in the bottom corner. But I really liked pulling those elements together across the pages by using the washi, the kit washi from this month, that dark purple um, with the uh, top triangle, you know, that kind of went back and forth like an arrow pointing up and down. I really like that. And then I paired it with last month's uh, floral washi. I love how we can use kit pieces from month to month because they will coordinate, even if it's a color, it's not always, it's not a theme that's repeated, but they will flow together. And I love being able to do that because it makes your kits go further. I keep all of my creative retreat kits together and these little plastic totes that are about the width of the card as it's standing up. And so I can kind of keep a file system and then I can easily access them, pull elements, alphas, washi, and all that kind of good stuff. That way it's right there at my fingertips and I don't forget about it and not use it up. I really enjoyed uh, sharing my pages with you today and what I had learned from doing a little extra research. I hope you are inspired to spend a little time listening to the hymn and then reading this devotional along with it. Um, Remember, I used this old hymn sheet in my Bible entry earlier this month. If you want to go back to the playlist for this kit, uh, if you haven't seen that, you can see how I did a little layering with a sticker sheet. Um, The ladies on the team have done a fantastic job sharing their heart and their creativity with this kit. So I hope you have time to go back and and are watching all of theirs. I love listening to um, what God is teaching them as they go through the study. I even take notes from uh, what I learned from them. And um, I added to my word study note from uh, watching um, Julie's video because she had done some extra note taking on some words. And so I added that uh, to some of mine. So it just helps us to get more and more out of the kit and learn from different perspectives and and what God is 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 showing and revealing uh, through their studies. So I hope you are joining us with this kit and are truly enjoying it. Y'all have a blessed day.